All right. So we have looked at the sounds of many languages in the world. We have looked at the IPA table, which tells us what sounds are possible for humans. How do you select the sounds for your language? My first piece of advice would be to look at phonemic inventories. These are the collections of consonants, vowels, and supersegmentals in a language. And supersegmental is the word we're uh, using only now. It means everything that is above the segments. So consonants and vowels are segments, and everything above them includes stress, which is marked as a property of the segments, uh, consonants and vowels. Tone, which is a property of the vowels, nasality and length, also properties of the vowels. So phonemic inventories tell you what are the collections of consonants, vowels, and supersegmentals that exist in a language. And as you look at them, you'll notice something interesting. They have patterns. For example, they may have quite a few fricative sounds. They may have quite a few alveolar sounds. But there's also gaps. There's no language that has a sound for every space in the IPA table. So what should you do? Think of languages that you like. Um, go think of a few languages that you have learned or that you think are beautiful and type Wikipedia Hungarian phonology or Wikipedia Hindi phonology. And go look at their phonemic inventories to try to see what sounds do they have and what sounds they don't have. I suggest that in addition to look at the, looking at languages that you love, you go looking for other languages, particularly ones outside of Europe, because that will give you many different ideas of what human languages could sound like. How to choose them, you know, use your imagination. Maybe you've always wanted to visit the Maldives or uh, Indonesia or Tahiti. Go look for Wikipedia Tahitian phonology, maybe, and try to see what this la their language sounds like. I'm going to show you three inventories, phonemic inventories for Hungarian, Cherokee, and Cook Islands Maori, just because they're different amongst themselves. So this is what the Wikipedia tables look like. The vowels are exactly the same as we've seen in the IPA. The consonant IPAs, as you can see, they're arranged um, pretty much the same way. So we have here labial sounds, which we call bilabial, but they're uh, fusing the bilabials and the um, labial dentals. We have a dental series, we have a post-alveolar series, palatals, velars, glottals, nasals, plosives or stops. Pretty much the same thing we've been studying. So what do you see? Uh, first of all, there are voiceless stops and voiced stops. C, D, K, G. There's no velar fricatives, so there's only fricatives in this region but not uh, palatals or velars. Hungarian has a lot of vowels, and as you can see, many of them can be the, the short version or the long version, e, e, u, u, and so forth. So some gaps, for example, it has fricatives for these, for these uh, places, but not for the velar one. This inventory is for Cherokee, a language spoken in North Carolina and Oklahoma in the US. It's an amazing language. It has its own writing system, which we'll look at on the week where we study historical linguistics. But for now, let's look at its uh, phonemic inventory. It doesn't have voiced consonants. It has only voiceless consonants. It doesn't have any labial stops, no P, no B. It has vowel length, so vowels can be long or sh short or long. And interestingly, there's nasalization, but only for one vowel the schwa, central mint. So it has a smaller sound inventory, but again, it's a human language. So it can combine these pieces, which might be different from English, to then produce any message that it wants. So that's what Cherokee looks like. No uh, voice stops. I, I worked in a series of, in an archipelago called the Cook Islands in the Central Pacific. And uh, I've worked on two islands, this one called Mauke and this one called Rarotonga. This is the phonemic inventory for Cook Islands Maori. As you can see, it has very few consonants. It has N, T, R, but no D, for example. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine consonants only. 
It has no voice stops, no, no B, no D. It has glottal stops. And as a matter of fact, the glottal stop is the most common sound in Cook Islands Māori. Uh, it has a V, but not an F in the Rarotonga dialect of Cook Islands Māori. And as a matter of fact, it, it's, it only has one fricative. It doesn't have an S. It doesn't have an H in Rarotonga. So it's, it's, unusual. it's an unusual language in that it has quite a few stops, but less fricatives. So, and again, even though it has fewer consonants, um, they can still be recombined to produce any human message. By the way, it has vowel length, so you have short vowels and long vowels. Uh, it, yes. So, first of all, go look at phonemic inventories of languages that you think are beautiful, of languages that you think are interesting, from places that you'd like to go, just to see what inventories look like. Sometimes they have patterns, like having long and short and long vowels. Sometimes they have gaps, like having only one fricative uh, and not others. After you look at the consonants, take a look at the vowels um, uh, in the language. As you might have seen, the languages are roughly equally distributed in the space. If you have three vowels, they're, all, they're not all going to be high or front. So Arabic, for example, has three main vowels. Uh, e, u. And they can make up to six because they have the, sh the short and the long versions. And they are all roughly equally distributed in space. This is so to this is so that they're optimized so that they can have a maximal difference and they're easier to perceive. Spanish has five and also, also they're roughly distributed equally across the space in a triangular shape. This one is also a triangle. Italian has seven and it's also a kind of triangle. Swedish has 17, some of them short, some of them long, and it's still triangular, but it does have a little bit more crowding in this region, for example. Uh, probably because you can move the tip of your tongue with, uh, with, with a finer degree of accuracy than you could the body and the back of your tongue, for example. So there's more sounds to be produced here. So take a look at the vowels and try to come up with a few three to 15 vowels from, and distribute them equally across the space. Then try to come up with some consonants, maybe between eight and 20 would be good. The Cook Islands Maori has eight, uh, so, sorry, nine. So this is like the minimum number. Hungarian has 20 something, so that's good. There's languages with many more, but let's keep it short. Make sure you have patterns. So for example, Hungarian has several dental sounds. So it doesn't make sense that, for example, it only has one sound in each point. Even Cook Islands Māori has three alveolars, for example. So try to have systematic patterns, but also leave some gaps because natural languages have gaps. For example, in Spanish, we have voiced stops, P and the voiced B, T and the voiced D, K and the voiced G, but we do not have voiced fricatives. We don't have a V and we don't have a Z. And this is perfectly natural. As we saw in the other ones, no language makes use of all the slots. So uh, make sure you leave some gaps here and there to make it more natural. Also, don't use languages that uh, are completely different from English, for example. Uh, you can use a website like Foibo to try to see how common or uncommon some sounds are. For example, 96% of human languages have the consonant M, but only 4% have the consonant theta, th. English is one of them. This, this is a language that is not very common in the world's languages. So make sure you have a good mixture of some of many common ones and a few that maybe are not that common in the world. And finally, make your first word. This is the inventory for Dothraki from Game of Thrones. As you can see, uh, dental stops, alveolar fricatives and rhotics and so forth, four vowels. How do you build basic words? You combine them. For example, you take the post alveolar sh and the vowel o to make sh, spot. Or you take the Africa ch, the vowel a, and voiceless labial fricative f to make cha, wind. So 
I want you to try to do the same thing. Take you, think of your favorite word in English. Maybe it's love, dragonfly, cheese, whatever. From the consonants that you've chosen, take one. And from the vowels that you've chosen, take one and combine them. And this is going to be the first word in your language. Next week, we'll study syllables. And this, was allow this will allow us to make longer words.